Good morning. It's Monday morning, Hanny. It is the final Monday in February 2021. I am grateful that you're here either live or in the replay. I regret that I am a few minutes late today. My keyboard somehow got unplugged, so I was trying to figure out why when I was trying to give this a title, my keyboard wasn't working. Yay for technology. Um, I am Tanny Reed Walker. I am a counselor with FCSS. I work primarily in the Coaldale and Tabor area and the MD of Tabor and the, sometimes in the county of Lethbridge. Um, I work all over and I have been working as a counselor for over a decade and a lot of what I work with is grief and loss. So during this time, it's actually, this is our 42nd week of doing Monday morning. And um, I'm grateful that I have had this time here with you to support you on your grief journey. This is the final one that I'm doing for now. I feel like I should change up and do something else. I had some suggestions and I will mull those around and see where they end up. But for now, we're just, this is the final Monday morning. Um, it's also the final for loving from the outside in and mourning from the inside out. This lovely little book from Dr. Alan Wolfelt. If you've been following along, you know that I adore Dr. Alan Wolfelt's work. He is, his whole life has been dedicated to working and supporting people with grief and life transitions. He has a beautiful center for healing in Colorado. He has incredibly good trainings and is an extremely prolific writer. So I fully endorse looking into his work. There's also a couple other people I've talked about here through this journey and I've I know there's tons and tons and tons of other resources out there. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. I know it has been an extremely, extremely big honor for me to be here supporting you through your journey, um, whether it's now or ever. I'm really grateful to you and to your process. I'm going to um, get started then. Our last two chapters are hope and transformation. And I think that's a beautiful way to kind of finish off working with my Monday mornings. Um, COVID has been very difficult. It's been extra difficult for people who have lost loved ones. Uh, I know that there's people who have moved and had huge transitions in their lives and expected to start something completely new and and everything got put on pause and as human beings we have a very difficult time with that especially when we're in a transitional period and perhaps all of our normal and natural supports have have been left behind from a move or maybe they're just down the street, but we're constantly working on isolating and staying separate. And it's so counterintuitive to, to our human needs. So I'm happy to be finishing off this, this series, this Monday morning with, with hope and with transformation, because that is, Hope is the thing that keeps human beings going. Hope is is where we go after we've spent the time processing that loss and and the grieving, those painful feelings start to soften a little and some light kind of shines in and that's how I see hope. It's that light that shines in, and as it comes, you uh, embrace it. 
So hope is the expectation that something positive is coming and that the future can hold goodness and happiness and love again. Your present and past have been made painful from your grief, but thank goodness we have hope. Hope is realizing that whatever we're experiencing right now is not permanent. Things always, always continue to change. Hope is beautiful. When you were with the person that you loved who is no longer here, you enjoyed the present. You looked forward to the months and years to come and you were hopeful. And when that ended, all of that hope may have felt like it died with the person. It invites you to question the meaning and the purpose of your life and eventually create new hope and new meaning. Everything changes or mostly everything changes when someone passes or someone leaves. Your hopes, your dreams, your concerns, your roles, and then you start looking eventually for that new hope and those new meanings. Lots of people that I've heard and listened to who have had someone pass away feel hopeless. They're not sure they can go on living and what a normal and natural thing to feel when it all just got taken away. It's very natural. And eventually, when it starts to soften, you can feel that hope start to come in. It's very difficult when people try to shove hope on you before you're ready. It's insensitive. Finding people who understand that hope takes time and are there with you to walk through that wilderness of pain is really important. And it's also important that when you're ready to let some of that hope shine in, that they're there for you to listen and be gentle, not to be excited and drag you into the hope, but to listen and be gentle. And as always, I'm going to talk about self-care. Take care of yourself. A lot of people think self-care is like feeling sorry for yourself and just never ever having motivation to do anything ever again. It can be considered selfish, self-indulgent, um, but it's not. It just means that you've created space and time and care for you to integrate that loss into your heart and soul so that you can rediscover hope for living. Nurturing yourself and caring for yourself and being kind to yourself is what will give space for that hope eventually. So take the time to care for yourself. As time distorts, and the loss cuts you off from your normal way of being, the, being in the world, remembering self-nurturance is about self-acceptance. You recognize that self-care begins with you. You are the one that can decide how to take care of yourself. You are your best friend. You are with you always. And why wouldn't you want to take care of your best friend? So recognize that self-care begins with you and that can be creating boundaries and a lot of it is what I talked about last week is taking care of your needs. Your, are you drinking enough? Are you eating enough? Are you sleeping enough? Are you getting the connections that you are required? Don't torture, self-torture yourself, self-care. And self-care is what helps us grow. You can't yell at a plant, take away its food and its sunshine and expect it to grow. You have to nurture it 
and it's the same for you. And when people do offer love and care and acceptance, oh, please accept that. Please embrace that and take it. It's for you and you're worth it. So how do we start bringing hope into our lives? One way is to gently remind yourself that you will survive. It feels hopeless feels painful everything's gray and gloomy your heart hurts and your stomach's empty but you don't want to fill it it's just really hard and it's just whispering to yourself I will survive I will survive I am here remind yourself that you will survive and as you do, your broken heart will start to heal. What you think about, your brain will start to believe in. The brain's like, of course I will survive. I am surviving. I can survive. And then you start to see some color in the world again. You're eating. You're taking care of yourself. And those are all part of hope. And you're realizing that there is some happiness out there. As you allow hope in, your renewed energy will be a gentle reminder that your divine spark is preparing for reignition. The spark isn't gone. It's there. We're going to ignite it. So some things Dr. Alan Wolfelt suggests for journaling prompts, or just thought prompts, is as you've learned about the concept of divine spark, how would you describe yours right now? What's your spark like? Is it a tiny, tiny ember? Is it a flame? What is it? How are you doing with your self-care at this time? If you've been following me for the last 42 weeks, I wonder how many times I've said the word self-care. Oh, my Lanta, you're so worth being cared for. Anyway, how would you describe it? And don't beat yourself up if you haven't been doing it. How would you describe it? And then what's one thing you can do? I'm adding that one on. One thing you can do to remind you that you will survive and that you are worth it. Are you accepting hope that people around you are trying to give you? If so, how? And if not, why not? And again, this isn't judging yourself. Sometimes we're not ready for hope. We're just in too much pain and need to be there. And that's okay. One of Dr. Alan Wolfeld's um, things that he said, I think it was the very first time I heard him, well over a decade ago, was, darkness is the chair that light sits in. And part of me feels like light, darkness can't even exist unless there's a little bit of light so you know the difference. And nothing is more scary than there not being any light. I was in a cave, like a mining cave once, and they, we went deep down in. It wasn't that deep, but it was deep enough that there was no light. And we flicked off all the lights, and it was so unsettling. Like you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. There was no shadows. There was nothing. And as soon as you turn some light on, oh, the relief. So finding your divine spark... Finding some light can really help light, like change it. Let that darkness be the light, the chair that light sits in. Here's a quote from Steindahl. A very small degree of hope is sufficient to cause the birth of love. Ooh, that's beautiful. Martin Luther said, everything that is done in the world is done by hope. So let that glimmer of hope in and nourish it. The next chapter is transformation. And the image is really cute. It's funny that I talked about a plant. Can you see that? It's like watering that flower with love. 
transformation literally means an entire change in form. When you fall in love, it feels like everything is different. Oh, everything, like things are funnier, the sun is brighter, the rain feels refreshing, the cold is brisk and fun, everything changes. You go from an I to a we, and oh, the energy of that is incredible. You create this spiritual connection that inspires greater focus and allows experience to take on a greater meaning. I didn't realize I could feel this way. Everything looks and feels different. I have a new bounce to my step, a new outlook on each day. I can't wait to start each day and see his face, to hear his voice. I am thinking so clearly and I am surrounded by joy. There's a quote here from Gregory J.P. Godek. Life, love is not a mystery to be solved, it is an experience to be savored. Love transforms us, sets us off on a journey. It's amazing. And loss is also transformative. It's life changing. You didn't ask for it. You didn't want it. You have been transformed by it. You have and you will grow. It's still love. It's just very, very different. You would have rather avoided this. Of course you would have. Who wants this pain? Who wants to be transformed like this? Well-meaning people are like, you will find meaning. Oh my goodness, you created this amazing thing out of that loss. And sometimes that lands on us with so much pain of a thousand arrows. You didn't want this. You didn't want to change because of a loss. But we do. And I'm sorry if people have tried to say this to you and it landed in a painful way. We can understand. You would have rathered anything but this loss. So those comments are untimely and they're said without extra thought. But we're human. So please be kind to yourself and try to be kind to others when they're trying to see the light that maybe you're not ready to see or look at. You can often, often realize that you have new attitudes about things. You may be more patient or sensitive to the feelings and circumstances of others. A new awareness of how much pain hurts and why people are acting the way they act. It's very different. You may have developed a new sense of humor about things. Maybe you're a little bit more at ease being around people who have had loss. Your transformation could also explore, help you explore your thoughts and the assumptions about life. Death invites an exploration, what your values are, what your meaning is, your spiritual thoughts and beliefs and understandings. It's going to create a new, a new perspective and that's okay. It's okay to transform. You may well need to do all you can to be you. You're learning who you are, why you are. You're trying to ask these big questions as to why you are still here. And that's okay. Ask the questions. Learn about it. How is this transforming you? 
How is this changing you? Because you are different. So you need to get to know the new you. And it takes time to get to know somebody new, even when it's yourself. Sometimes people die a long time before they stop breathing. They give up. They don't have anything left. They've cut everything out. They don't love anybody. They don't promise anything to anybody. They just stop living. So please don't let that happen to you. I think if you've been following along, you're not the person that's going to let that happen to. Remember that you are a precious human being and you matter. You matter. And you are here because there are things for you to do and people for you to love including yourself. You are transforming. Maybe you have transformed. So take some time to look at who you are. Some questions, some thoughts to think about are, in what ways did love transform your life? What did it do? I love hearing people's love stories and their eyes light up and the realizations that they experience about themselves and others. And then how was grief transforming your life? What changed? Do you savor the moments now realizing that before you didn't know just how amazing they were? What changed? Are your assumptions, values, and priority priorities changing since the death? How or how not? Just explore that. In what ways are you living for the person who died? Are you completing their tasks? Are you picking up their one of their causes? Are you suddenly a little bit more funny? and taking that role on that they left behind? What ways are you living for the person who died? Would you say you have grown or, as gro or are growing as a result of your grief? And how will you live your new life as you honor your past life and love? A few episodes back, we talked about orbiting and embracing that orbit inside us instead of it being outside of us. And I feel like that kind of reflects that. Daphne Rose Kingma says, your relationship is a precious jewel. Not everyone has been given such a gift. Treasure it, hold it in your hand and up to the light and see its extraordinary beauty open your heart and transform your life. That's so beautiful. So the final word is a poem or a little statement. And Dr. Alan, Neufeld, or Alan Wolfeld says, I invite you to remember the power of and as you move through the coming weeks and months. I am sad and I am present to all that is good in my life. I feel lost and I'm finding my way. I miss him and I choose joy. I am breathed and I am actively loving others in my life. I grieve and I love. I love and I mourn. And with that, I applaud you for your courage, for that bravery of going through this wilderness. And I ask that you take care of yourself, that you reach out to people who are willing to walk with you through this wilderness and know that you don't have to do this alone. You have to do the work. Some of it may be alone, but it doesn't all have to be alone. 
and I appreciate you and I thank you for being on this journey with me and I wish hope love and transformation for you thank you so much take care